Dude, this song is so good. Warren Haynes has always been one of my very favorite singers, guitar players, and songwriters. Um, this song, I think, Soul Shine was his nickname that his dad used to call him. How freaking cool is that? Um, hey, Soul Shine, come over here. Like, what? That's awesome. So this is like his quintessential song. And the song is, it features just incredible, you know, emotion, imagery, but delivery too. You get, you know, this was written for the Allman Brothers, right? When he's when the Allman Brothers. And so you get first verse, this jet live, talking live here, you get Greg to sing it. And no one delivers it better than him, right? And then you get Warren. And then you get to trade, uh, you know, a bunch of leads. And, you know, this song in particular, as a guitar player, from a guitar player's standpoint, um, all of you should dig in deep to the subtle nuances that happen in here. It's, it's the main feature of this style, of this bluesy sound over major chords is the tag. The tag with minor after you've been in major all day. That is the thing. That is the takeaway. And this song is just a masterclass in that. There's so many little subtle nuances that you hear vocally and from your guitars um, where you're hearing that that constant playful mix of major and minor. And if you're not paying attention, it'll pass you by. But as soon as you get it under your fingers and in your ear, you'll realize that's the sound I've been hearing. That's it. That's what makes it uh, the song that it is. That's what it is. And it will, and it will change the way you play guitar because it'll force you to be more vocal, to pick up those little vocal inflections. It's hard to do. We play a fretted instrument, right? We don't have a sliding voice, right? You get to see Derek do it, um, but no one else gets to do it. And uh, <sighs> let's do it, man. Let's do it. So I, the track I've picked today, which we're going to break down, features Derek Trucks, Trey Anastasio, and Greg Allman, right? With sitting in with Government Mule. So you get to see three different guitar players. You get to see a killer band. And of course, you get to see, you know, Greg, arguably the best Southern, Southern rock, whatever you want to call it, singer of all time. No one does it better. Can't be done better. Dude's always flawless. Um, let's jump right in here. Chords. We're in the key of B flat here. So your basic progression in your verse is you have one, five, four, one. So B flat, F, and E flat. Now, I'll point it out to you if I hear it as we go along here. We're doing this live. There's some voice leading that happens, right? Sometimes you get that F over A, so you can get this downward bass movement. Same thing with your E flat over G. Um, then your other chords that you're going to encounter here is you have a G minor, so it's your six, your relative minor B flat, and then a flat seven. That's shine to the break of day chord, right? That's it. Your A flat. Uh, one other one that you will get in here, you will get a three. Just in one little part in that bridge, you'll get a D minor. Let's do it. I'm telling you, grab your guitar. go through these notes with you one at a time because they're signature riffs here. So it's B flat. So B flat major, right? Five, six, root, second, third. Right? This is over your one chord. Right? Hanging on that 
two, which is the fifth of your five chord. Right? Because that's sort of your G minor. Right, this is your minor third, B flat. Again, your minor third in G. And then here's your G. Tag, he always does. I've watched a bunch of these. Minor third, major third, right? To get that B flat first inversion where your third's in the bass. Same thing. Right? Bending up to that three. Right? It's just five, six, one, two, three. That, um, uh, got a four or five here. Right? Hanging on that two. When it goes to the G minor, playing this. G minor pentatonic. So hanging on that major or that minor third. Remember, B flat. Your thirds create chord function. And then there's that tag. I told you about this tag. That can you feel it? Can you feel how that makes it? It's subtle. It puts the B in subtle, right? You got to bend from the five. Push on it. Get all the way in the neighborhood of that flat seven. Right? And then five, four, flat three. Hammer that root two times. I'm telling you, I know it's elementary, simple, but it's the simple stuff done tastefully, you know, at the right time, delivered well, that makes great tunes great. Onward. I mean, who's a better singer than that? <laughs> In this genre, I don't like anybody. So let's talk about the melody. Learn the melody, what the voices sing, the stuff that people sing in the audience, the stuff they're expecting to hear, the earworms, the hooks, right? Learn the melody of every song that you learn. If you're going to play it live, have the melody in your bag, ready to go, okay? More than anything else, the melody is the roadmap which the writers of the tune figured out that ties the chords together. The melody is what makes it work. And what makes it work here, you saw Warren tease it at the beginning. What makes it work here is he's major, 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 major. But then over the moonshine, when he goes to that four chord, he makes it dominant, and you get to play minor over that for that little bit. And you get to tag it and then clean it up with major. I'm telling you guys, that's the nuts. That's the real stuff. That's what makes it work. It's why Moonshine is your favorite part in the song, whether you knew it or not. Check it out. So your basic verse, right? You got... 
You got to... Uh... You're just up and down. Now you can choose to play higher or lower, but this is major pentatonic all day. Major. Just, you're major. You're playing back and forth between the root and your major third. Those are your resolution points. That's throughout the verse. Then when it gets into the chorus, right, you got the... So your first tag, so in soul shine, you can go up to the fifth, right? And resolve down to the root. Then when it goes to the five chord over the F, it hangs on the two. That's crucial for the melody. It's the fifth of your five chord, right? C is the fifth of F. That's why that works. And here comes the money. Here's your four chord, but we're making it dominant moonshine, right? What do you see in here? One, you obviously see a four, but then you see it's that it's that minor third in B flat, right? So that's why that works. So, so you sl sl slam right up into that four and do a little minor third thing. The voice, you know, we're a fretted instrument. We can't do it. Well, Derek can do it, but no one else can do it. You know, so we have to you know, funge it, get in the neighborhood of that. Um, and then, in the damn sure better than rain, you can clean it right up. That, that. You know, you can clean it up and make it major, right? Um, or like I like to do. Just tag a little of that minor again, but it's just like a, a blip, just a little like, like a whisper, you know? And then, straight back to major for the rest of the for the rest of the form. And I can't, I'm telling you this might seem small. It might seem trivial like, oh yeah, you know, we'll just you know, we'll do minor over that four and then, you know, go go grab a chorus light and forget about it. But that's it's it can't be overstated the importance of that what's happening in the voices, in the melody. If you replicate that when it's your turn to take a lead, you're gonna have the whole audience right, right here, not here, not here, right, right, right there, because the ear wants it, whether they know it or not. They want the moonshine, they want that dominant four chord, they want the little sprinkle of minor right there. Onward. I grew up thinking I had it made. Or it's so great. Make it all my own. See how that rhythm section, see how tight they were? They, they slowed down there. Bass players watching the drummer. No click here. No tracks. You know, that is live. I, you, you can miss this stuff if it passes you by. I want you to listen to this again. I'm going to rewind. I know. I know. It's hard out there. Back to what my dad has said. He's a boy in this darkness. Six, seven. That's your son. Break it down.
here's Trey now, right? Trey gets first lead. So you got the... Right? Staying in this... We'll see what he does. But staying in that... B flat major. Now wait for it, okay? Keep going. All the... Hear that minor? He knows. He knows. I'm telling you, that's it. That's the sound you've been hearing in your head. <laughs> that's it. Bending that five. Oh no, what I do? Oh, I gotta work on my keyboard skills. Great feedback then. Yeah. Now, so Warren's taking a difference going down. Yeah, just still the same thing, still that B flat major. So this is over that bridge part. So it's that is when you go to the sixth, the G minor, and then do the four. So this is the fifth of your four. So moving into that Albert King spot, bending up that four, flat three to the root. This is key-centered soloing. This is not chord tone soloing. This is not chord scale soloing. This is key-centered, meaning it's B-flat and you're mixing major and minor to ear, to ear. get to, that is one half step below the root, right? Even though in this song we have a flat seven, since we're going to a legit three chord, a legit D minor, right? He's got to go down. He's got to go down and he's got to actually get a real A, which is the fifth of D. So he's doing that little minor third thing, but it's to achieve it's to achieve a chord tone, the fifth of that D minor chord, so that he can sell that change. If he stays in B flat here, you're gonna be one half step above the root of the chord you're playing. Frowned upon, frowned upon in most circles. So you gotta know, this is what I'm talking about, your target, you gotta have your skeleton. So he just does that run that 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 uh... B flat major pentatonic, right? But he's bending up to get that nine. Yeah, yeah. Bend to the third, and then letting that nine ring. Killer, killer. Dude, he's a great player. It's so tasteful. Those little notes here, there. If you play all over the place, no one pays attention. But if you hit a little something different, it stands out like a beacon. You know, like a beacon in the middle of the night, and you're like, ooh, that was different. When he's playing B flat all day, and all of a sudden you get that A, you're like, hello. Like all of a sudden, you're listening again, right? It's like the. Kid that complains all the time. No one listens. But if the kid is usually fine, and all of a sudden he's upset, you pay attention because, like, it's different. Imagine that.
Make sure when you're doing it in your band, you have, I don't care what the charts say. Make sure you make that E flat, E flat seven. And if you got harmonies, make sure someone is grabbing that minor third. Get there. Go on and get there. Be somebody. I can't do it. He's got a slide. He's coming right in on that high. It's great. Trey comes in right in the middle. Warren comes in and goes a little lower. And Derek comes in straight on the train track all the way up. I mean, it's so good. His mixing of major and minor is otherworldly. Like, it's just otherworldly. You kind of have to just, you, you can't follow it on guitar. You, like, you can't, I can't do what he's doing like I can with Trey and Warren. It's just not, it's not, it's not an option um, for me. Um, but just listen, if you use your ear and you hear, every time you hear and you just think blues, right? You think, you think, ooh, ooh, that's that. That's that minor, just that. Sorry, we're back. My uh, thing cut off. When you're recording 4K, sometimes it overheats. What have you. Anyway, yeah. Derek Trucks, man. Just like the little mixing of the, of the minor stuff and the major stuff is so otherworldly. Let's keep going. You see when he's young here? When he's young here, do you see how respectful and deferential he is to the other monsters on the stage? Even his body language, just like, look at him. Like, he's just, he's, like, he had his thing, but then the second, the second someone else throws a little dart out there, dude, coils, coils back, not in, like, a, a, a bad, like, fearful way, just out of, like, total and utter respect. I love watching eclipse from this time period for this reason because now he's got the big beard and he's like essentially everyone's the guitar player everyone looks up to i don't care who you are you know watch other musicians watch him on stage and that that look of just like but in but when he's young like this He's looking at them like that, and he's completely reserved and respectful. Like it's just, just watch this. You hear a little, a little bit come in, and then he just backs off it like a total pro. <laughs>
I mean, all right. <laughs> it's just, you know, I love, you could see Derek trying so hard to not just, to not just eat them alive. <laughs> It's like you can see him doing it. You can tell when he's pushes on it, just just a little, just a little, just a little, you know, just a little cannon over the bow. You know what I mean? And you see him just kind of like look up around. Immediately he's back and being reserved. Just like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't do that. And then you, it's just Derek's the man. He's the best in the game. You can't hate him for it. He's like, we all want to be Derek Trucks. Um, anyhow. That's Soul Shine in a nutshell. Um, an amazing song. Uh, an amazing delivery. This is a great performance. Um, and uh, Warren Haynes just... Uh, what what can you say about Warren Haynes? The dude is phenomenal. And this is like his signature song. His masterpiece is, what I would, is how I would describe it. Um, and just the perfect opportunity for those of you like myself... Spending time in the woodshed trying to get better. Um, to learn the vocal inflections and how you can use that on guitar. This southern rock jam genre thing, if you want to paint with that broad brush, is, you know, that sound, that bluesy sound over major chords that is identified, right? Both in the guitar playing and the singing by being straight up and down the rails major and tagging with minor. That's what it is, dude. That's what it is. Um, and if you spend time learning the melodies, all the little vocal runs you hear him do, and the guitar stuff, you know, you'll see that it's always working towards that minor tag. It's life-changing. It's simple but it'll change the way you play forever, for the better, like it did me. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. I really appreciate it. And if you want to support this channel, if you like the way that I play, if you like the way that I teach, you want to see um, what I've written, what the curriculum I made that I teach my students, I hope you'll come join me over at guitargate.com. I'd love to be your online teacher. Um, I don't do Patreon. Uh, when I play these videos, uh, the money from ads go to the artist as they should. Um, <clears throat> so I don't really make money on YouTube. But I think playing the videos puts it in context. I think it helps. I think it's important. So uh, teaching at my website is what I do. I'd love to see you over there. And as always, drop links in the comments. I want you to take me wherever I'm going next, you know? I've been making the decisions my whole life. I want you to decide, what do you think I need to hear, right? And then we all learn together. Keep it in your hands, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day. Cheers.